Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at a creative fake cheat that is a very well-disguised malware. So, it's a common comment uh, that one of the ways to stay safe is to go to GitHub and use something open source. Unfortunately, the bad actors read the comments, so they know what's up. So what we have here is Escape from Tolkov, EFT, Silent Aimbot, Triggerbot, ESP Glow, Spoofer. Uh, that's a mouthful. So, of course, here's all the things this cheat would do. I, I don't play this game, so I don't really know. Uh, the source code is for educational purposes only. Now, this is probably lifted from someone else who may have made this cheat with genuine intentions. Now, are you going to ever have any luck with open source cheats on GitHub? No, because anti-cheat developers can read them, but... That's not really the point of this video. The point of this video was someone reached out to me saying they had made the mistake of downloading this and were wondering how, because they had a, a really nasty stealer that went off and bypassed their antivirus and they were wondering how it happened. So that's what we're going to look at. And they did also give me one more crucial piece of information that this happened during the compile time, which is kind of clever because some people think, well, if you're going to hide cheat malware in a cheat, that's open source, what you would do is simply provide a binary download that is malicious while the source code doesn't contain it. But that's not what these guys did. These guys are really being clever. So how this works is inside of the build files, the secret lies. So let's now go and take a look. So I used my normal technique. AI is very good at approximately understanding a bunch of different languages. So I copy and pasted each of the configuration files, knowing that was probably where the payload lied, into Claude, and it quickly enough found the problem, after nagging me about the ethics of using cheats in multiplayer games. I, I know, I don't. So ultimately, the solution file is harmless enough, but uh, once we go down to the next file is where we find the problem. I'm just going to open this in... Uh, Visual Studio Code so that we can see it rather than execute it. Now, after copy and pasting this into Claude, uh, we quickly found some interesting things going on here. So, what we have is a pre build event which appears to be a batch file syntax. And then we have several base64 strings. These are escaped. So, what ultimately is happening here is a malicious VBS script is being created. Now, there are a few ways we could tackle trying to analyze this. Given I'm on a VM and I don't hugely care if we do end up accidentally running this piece of malware, what I'm going to do is just get rid of the end of this function. Now we can go over to Visual Studio and run this as normal, and what this should do is drop the script without executing it. Now this is why Visual Studio does provide this security warning, but I assume everyone ignores it because this isn't something you think about happening very often. So we need to install some extra components. Now this is where our victim thought the malware might have been, but no, it's actually in the build script. So we'll run that. So we need desktop development with C++, which makes sense, because pretty much every cheat is going to be written in a very in a lower level language so that you can hook the memory. I don't even know how I did that, but somehow I mangled that in my editing. That's why I wouldn't load. So okay, we'll reload that. And now we have loaded it successfully which means all we have to do to build the payload is run the build, and this will initiate the malicious. Well, it worked. Probably the most ugly way of doing it. But now we can open this in Visual Studio Code, and we now know what this VBS script does. Now we can continue using this technique, and we just have to make sure that we don't run anything. So we're going to get rid of... I'm just going to Google what the what the comment for VB script is, because I haven't ever used it. The answer is, it's really annoying, so I, I'm just going to... I'm just going to dump the pieces I removed uh, to a different file, because I don't feel... Okay, so ultimately, rather than dealing with the uh, arcane VB script, I ended up just writing a simple Python script to concatenate and decode. I mean, what kind of language uses the ampersand as a string concatenation operator? That confused me a bit, but we got it all done. So now uh, we have this, and this could be more base64. So. Let's go back and see what we've got now. Common trick, because most languages optionally support semicolons, even if they don't require them. What they will do is they will use semicolons to create one massive line, because that makes everything easier. 
So we should be about to reach the real script. This massive base64 is the real script. And now we've got the real script. Okay, so now we've got the script fully unpacked and it's not all that obfuscated. So we have a couple of URLs that we follow. Now here is another PowerShell script. It doesn't look like a legitimate domain to me. And then we have something being loaded off of this site. This looks like ordinary base64. Okay, what that's doing. Probably some sort of binary data. We have a backup of the same data on this paste bin as well if it doesn't if the first download doesn't work. That's kind of clever. And there we go. We just had to so the actual answer and chat GPT was able to pick up on that and then I had to rework the script a bit. And there we go. Uh, in the span of about 10 minutes, we have the actual download link. Fake Windows search payload. Now it doesn't work with Windows's half-baked 7-zip implementation, but let's see if it works with 7-zip. And now, <laughs> for reasons unbeknownst to me, when I executed as a PowerShell, it seems there's some, there's some sort of funky encoding reason why I couldn't copy and paste the password. But as a result, we do ultimately get what we were after. Search filter. Now let's try this on virus total. Now, according to the victim, this is completely undetected by Malwarebytes, and I'm assuming Windows Defender, unless they had disabled that, because sometimes uh, cheaters will turn off security features. So far, no actual signature hits and just one heuristic hit, which, oh, first real hit. I, I never pay mine to ML and heuristic hits because they're wrong more than they're right. Oh, ML score again. You know, and of course, when you're uploading something you know is malware, uh, it, it can look kind of good, but trust me, uh, if you actually, you try them on anything that is harmless but not common, uh, you see the same result. Now I'm just putting it through Detect to Easy to see how exactly uh, what this file does. Uh, it's an electron package. So I think the most efficient thing we're going to be able to do with this is probably uh, load it onto a sandbox. So let's try that. So now that we've got the binary, we can now go onto any run or any other sandbox. Now, of course, it's a disclaimer, uh, this video is not sponsored, but given I have been sponsored by them in the past and my account on this service is provided by them, I just thought I would make that clear, but I like, I'm just using the service because it's good. So we can choose what kind of VM we want, doesn't really matter. I'm going to enable MITM proxy uh, so that we can get the Given this is an impost dealer, we can get all of the details from that, and we're going to agree to the public sample submission. Now we can just manually use the GUI to drag this out. It's going to ask us for the password, which is simply infected, because I changed it. Now we've sort of got an idea of what the background noise is, because these two processes are homeless. So now we run one that isn't so homeless. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Immediately, hordes of stuff goes off. Reg query consent prompt behavior admin. So this is a way of disabling UAC. Public download runners. Okay, so that is another payload. Integrity level elevation was added to startup, which is a massive red flag. reg.exe. Now it's doing some more registry edits to get rid of Defender. Now I would assume if we had tamper protection on this wouldn't work. Oh, so it targets malware bytes. That's actually something I've not seen. Let's see what else is targeting. Seems like it's just malware bytes. Something I have honestly never seen. That was something I'd often say a big benefit of using a third party antivirus is that it makes it much less likely, but in some cases it can be done. MITM dump. Dot oh, task list. Okay. So this is an anti analysis method. Now, this is useless, because if you've ever seen my videos where I use MITM proxy, I don't do it this way, because you can do it that way. Oh, and some, that's a weird... So they are starting to add anti-HTTP debugging stuff. Burp Suite, it's kind of a random fiddler. Now, of course, you can get around this just by renaming your HTTP debugger. Goes your service. So this is pretty much all anti-analysis. Now, first of all, it seems like this is downloading a GIF. Is this some sort of Azure... It could be, it could just be something uh, Windows related. API IPFI, 
That doesn't look Windows related to me. A lot of hits to API PFI. Let's see if they're all doing the same thing. Okay, and a Telegram C2. So that's actually where the command and control is running. And we hit company.store, which is another dropper domain in this campaign. We've pretty much got everything loaded. We've disabled any uh, hope of security software. Another trick it uses is it puts the interesting stuff in the public user's downloads, which it will have access to, but that we probably won't bother looking at. Now this later stage script is actually looking quite deobfuscated. This one is not holding back with words like payload. That's funny. Okay. So now we got malicious activity, evasion, API base 64. Now it's interestingly, it's not hitting a signature. So this does look like it might be a newer attack with many stages. And here we can look at the process graph, which in this case is going to be extreme because so many CMDs respond, most of which just ran. And then there's a few of them that actually ran some of the later payloads. Service.exe is the ultimate uh, stealer persistent payload, while the rest of these are all evasion and anti-defense. I'm also going to go on over to triage. You may be like, well, why would you bother doing both? And the answer is because I use them for different things. What triage is really good for is actually getting a dump of the exe. Because what you can do on triage is you can kill the exe with Task Manager, and that guarantees it'll be dumped so you can actually download at the final stage if it looks like this. It's like it detected that because the public's downloads didn't go. That's why I always like to do multiple tests so that if we got a false negative. But the good news is triage still figured out what it was doing, I think mainly because of that, and the UAC bypass, which... While there are benefits to using a UAC bypass, in my opinion, not a malware developer, of course, it's immensely overrated because people on Windows users will usually click yes on a UAC prompt. And if you enable the UAC bypass, it makes it trivially easy for all sorts of antivirus to figure out what's up. Yeah, and we still see enough of this that we are well aware of what this is up to. I mean, if it's ever touching... So yeah, there is a... An MBAM, a mal an anti malware bytes, which is the antivirus that the victim who reached out to me was using, and an anti defender. That's kind of unlucky. So, other, other software, such as let's say Bitdefender or Kaspersky, wouldn't be affected. But, I mean, by the time you've executed this, you're already in trouble. So, that is going to be all for this video. I hope it was interesting. Just as a reminder as well that. There, there's a lot of clever ways of hiding malware. So you can never rely on a heuristic like, oh, it's open source, therefore it's not going to be malware. Open source is good, but check the build scripts because some people know that people generally don't. That's all for me for now. Bye.